Welcome back to another video of Brown Struggle in Canada and today we're taking you to five different cities of Canada in just one day. I know it might sound a little impossible but it is possible because we are taking you to Little Canada. Little Canada is located in front of Dundas Square. This is one of the busiest places in the city so when you're traveling do factor that in in your transit. Once we were here, we headed down to get our ticket scanned. Tickets for Little Canada can be bought here at the counter or online. Once we got our tickets, we had to go through a security check, after which you will find the map that will show you exactly all of the places that are here to see. There are also many new places that are coming to Little Canada, but for now, we headed to see what was already in there. So the first place that we saw was the Little Niagara. We have been to Niagara Falls several times and we can vouch that this place is the exact replica of the Niagara Falls. We have always enjoyed going there and being surrounded by the huge buildings, but this time we were looking at the miniatures of these buildings from a giant's perspective, which we never thought was possible until we discovered this place. The attention to detail was insane, each and every architecture was replicated so accurately, they even had a day and a night view of the town and the entire cycle was just 15 minutes. After seeing Little Niagara, most of the other exhibits are downstairs through the escalator. After coming downstairs, we reached the Little Toronto. Now this is the Smurfs version of Toronto. Here you'll find every single landmark in Toronto from Union Station to the City Hall as well as the Dundas Square, Scotiabank Arena, CN Tower, Ripley's Aquarium and every other major landmark in the city. Our favorite one was the Rogers Centre which had an opening roof which showed you the spectators inside and to add a little bit more detail, there was also a live match playing inside the stadium. Taking the GO train westward, we enter the Little Golden Horseshoe. This area represents the most industrialized area of Canada. It stretches starting from Toronto all the way down to the Niagara-on-the-Lake region. It shows some of the most prominent industries near Burlington and Hamilton area and you get a chance to see some working trains and trucks going over the Burlington Skyway. It was really interesting to see that this area is where the first ever Tim Hortons was opened in Canada. A fully operational model of the highway is a standpoint of this area as it's amazing to see how the trucks use different signals and follow traffic rules while going through this area. And after that it was time to see the little version of Canada's capital city, here comes the little Ottawa. It was so nice to see all the historic landmarks of Ottawa in miniature form such as Peace Tower, Parliament Hill, Royal Canadian Mint and Rideau Canal. Once again, the attention to detail was very impressive. Here is a glimpse of downtown Ottawa and also their famous O-Train. They also replicated the famous Canada's Day celebration at the Parliament Hill and we were surprised to see the light show and the exact same replication of the fireworks. They also did not miss the Ottawa's famous Gatineau Hot Air Balloon Festival and the Tulip Farm. And it was so funny to see everything that was happening in each room of the Fairmont Shadow Hotel. There was also a literalization station from where you can buy a miniature version of yourself or have it placed permanently in the Little Canada. Moving on, now we entered the Little Quebec area. Known for its brutal winters, you could see the snow-covered mountains right away. And as with the models of other cities, this area was filled with details as well. 
you could see the famous Fairmont Chateau from Tanak. There was also the Ice Palace, the infamous Quebec Bridge, and the cold urban life in a city in Quebec. Moving on, we came to the miniature mission control, which was really interesting to see as it was set up like real security cameras in a city. And this showed us just exactly how much detail and value they put into these models. Now it was time to go up where we got to see the other areas that are coming very soon to Little Canada. They're all getting developed, but it takes a long time, even with the amazing team that's there at Little Canada. We got to see the miniature makers, where we were able to see the little models in development. And it was really interesting to talk to somebody there to know that this has been in development since the last seven to eight years, and it had taken so long to release it to the public. They're here here you could also find the little things souvenir shop where you could buy other merchandise from the store as well as well as you could get the little bites restaurant where you will be able to get a refreshment before you head out to enjoy another spot in the city overall our experience here was amazing as it was a well rounded trip as we stepped out we happened to find something very interesting Right in the front, in Dundas Square, we saw that there was a Mexican festival happening. So we headed there to check it out. There are many amazing opportunities of enjoying the festivals in front of Little Canada at Dundas Square. So if you're here, don't forget to check it out. And with that, let's head on to our next location. So now we are at the Ontario Science Centre, which is one of the first interactive science museums in the world. Let's check it out. The parking at the Ontario Science Centre is paid and you would be paying $12 for the parking. The tickets for the Ontario Science Centre can be picked up from the dome building, which is their front entrance as well. Here you can find the Omnimax Theatre, which is an interesting place to visit that you have to pay for separately. Along with our tickets, we were given a map of the facility, which makes it a breeze to go through the location. Before you get going, make sure you get a snack from the Tim Hortons, so did we. During our visit, there were some renovations happening at the front of the Ontario Science Centre. To see the Ontario Science Centre, you can then board a shuttle to go to the back entrance of the Ontario Science Centre and start your trip from there. The amazing lit entrance was super cool and took us to the Western Family Innovation Centre. Here the kids were playing with the different interactive exhibitions which were amazing to go through. I personally like to tinker with these as well, so I went ahead and tried some of them. There is so much to experiment with in this area that you can easily find yourself spending at least an hour with your kids here. But be aware that it is very busy and it might take some time waiting around for your turn. Up next, we headed to the main hall again to find our second path through to the next location, which was the AstraZeneca Human Edge Center. Switch. Here, there were several exhibitions for the biological systems of humans or life in general. It's really interesting to see an X-ray vision or a transparent vision of the human body not only as an adult but also as your infant stage. After making the dance floor light just by myself, it was time to go to the next location which was the Living Earth. As we entered the Living Earth section, there were very interesting animals like poison dart frogs, some real skeletons, interactive exhibits and also the Tellus Rainforest. And after the rainforest, we got to crawl through a cave and continued to the next section which was the Science Arcade. 
In this section, there were different varieties of interactive games. No matter what age you are, you would be able to find something of your interest to do here. By this time, we were very hungry, so we checked out the restaurant at the Ontario Science Centre. This is called the Valley Restaurant, and you can find some really quick-to-eat fast food items here. We tried their poutine as well as the onion rings, and we thought the food was okay. We also found this frozen yogurt machine, and it was something really interesting. On top of that, it was really, really delicious. Moving on, the hall leading to the upper levels also stopped at the Kohorn family nature escape. We took a five minute break watching the animals as well as enjoying the natural surroundings along with some natural sculptures before we headed to level number four which was the Space Planetarium. This is also where you could find the Kids Park Zone as well. Up next is the Space Center, so be prepared for some out-of-the-world experience. Starting from Earth, Moon and Sun, here you can see how the lunar eclipse happened. And likewise, there were so many other learning exhibits about different planets. So some interactive ones like this space chair. And also, this was our first time seeing meteoroids from the moon and also from Mars. Up next was the kids park. This section was made specifically just for the kids and there were so many interesting learning and fun activities for the kids here. And the next section was the interactive flight exhibition, which is a recent addition to the Ontario Science Museum. If you ever wondered about the physics behind the airplanes or the point of view of a bird flying thousands of feet high or what you would see from a space rocket, then this place can answer all of your questions. There is also an outdoor terrace if you want to grab a snack here. We went up to see the planetarium which unfortunately was closed that day. Going out, we passed through the forest lane which was filled with the nature, art and the science of forestry and trees. Ontario Science Centre was huge and had so many learning exhibits, so plan to spend at least half a day here like we did. And that was it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do and we will be back with another video.